Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're here, round number three of the D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It's the chase, and somebody wanting to chase us to the top end of the championship in pro sport. Taylor James, yesterday you did it the right way, top qualifier. Yeah, no, it was a good, eh? Had some um, good practice laps, uh, new engine package in there for this round. Um, yeah, definitely a bit of a struggle to get here. Um, motor failure last round sort of set us back a bit, but um, yeah, got a new one in there. It's good, running well. So yeah, managed to get on the top top for pro, uh, qualifying. So that no, was a good day. Eh? I mean, that's always got to be a good feeling for you. You got to have a lot of confidence going in there. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, it's um, a bit of a hard track to get to all the clips and that, but um, no, managed to pull it off. It was good. So no, feels good. Eh? So last year we had a number of sponsors and stuff on the door. This time it's looking a little bit bare, mate. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, no, it's a bit of a struggle this year. Um, yeah, just um, but gets harder and harder every year. And um, yeah, a few good sponsors that have stuck with us in that. And then, yeah, a few that have sort of just found it a bit hard, I guess. So, nah, we're making do with what we've got. And yeah, it seems to be paying off. It might be a case of if we want this man on the top spot, he needs a sponsor. Look, you're going through, uh, who are you going to potentially be battling? Because you've got a free pass into the next round. Yeah, yeah, so um, top qualifier gave us a buy into the top eight. So, um, I think the winner out of Andy Donoghue or Alex Griffin is who we go up against. So whoever the winner there is, who we'll see in the top eight. Do you enjoy the battle? Yeah, no, nah, it's cool, eh? Yep, no, nah, it's good. It's good for points to get us, but yeah, no, nah, it's always good to be battling, so it's good. Well, Taylor James enjoys the battle. I'm sure you at home also enjoy the battle. It's battle time. Top 16 for the Pro Sport Championship. Your wear hat is always smooth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very warm welcome. The Chase, round number three of the D1NZ National Drifting Championship, Hampton Downs Motorsport Park, the North Waikato, and it is home to round number three. Yesterday saw qualifying for both the Pro Sport and Pro Championship, but now it is time for the Pro Sport. Of course, brought to us by Turbo Smart. Hi, I'm Steve Daniel, one of the commentary team here for the D1NZ. I'll be joined shortly by Brendan White, of course, and a number of other drivers during the day. So it's a great place to be last, uh, sorry, yesterday, a very hot day, uh, very, very, very hot, lots of temperature, and I can tell you there's been a lot of temperature in the pits today. Uh, we've had a big oil drop by one of our pro drivers, which has uh, essentially meant that for the last hour we've been putting the dust down to, uh, to dry that stuff up. So we are ready to go drifting. It is, of course, pro sport time. So I'll have a quick chat through the battles on the left hand side of the screen the first one will be Alex Griffin going up against Andy Donoghue now the winner of this battle here is going to go up against our top qualifier Taylor um, Taylor James but it is time now to send our first battle of the day it's the Rat King S15 of Alex Griffin on the left hand side of the screen going up against Andy Donoghue as we do the big weight shift and move our way into our first battle of the day Lead drive Alex Griffin comes through, hits his, and his outside clip as he comes into the second turn here at Hampton Downs. Of course, round three of the Turbo Smart Pro Sport Championship. Donahue at this stage unable to get onto the rear bumper where he'd like to be. Of course, we have our return run coming up in a couple of minutes' time as they come through the Cooper Tires Luxio. Moved to Max Motor Speedway in Wellington, but now it's got back to one of the uh, traditional drifting tracks, which, of course, a circuit the circuit venue which is Hampton Downs. So second half of this battle now, it'll be Andy Donoghue this time, who is going to lead out Alex Griffin. So these are our eighth and ninth place getters yesterday in qualifying. So come through the first turn, hitting the inside clip, this is Donoghue this time up front in the C33 Laurel, the HK upholsterer's machine. It's a V8 versus Barra into the last big sweeping turn. Alex Griffin, I think he's done a great job. This might be enough to go through. Slightly sloppy in the line, I can tell you. Is. Well, here we go. Let's see, we've got Brendan Dunker, Dan Mackey, and Zach Pohl. Andrew Donoghue says Brendan Dunker, Dan Mackey, Zach Pohl, both say Alex Griffin. We swipe left to Alex Griffin, and that is going to be enough heading through to take on Taylor James in the top eight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's a, uh, it's a huge change in what we've just heard. I've just been told that Andrew Donoghue has actually gone through. Andrew Donoghue takes out the win over Alex Griffin. I'm not sure exactly what happened with the uh, computer, but Zach Pohl 
it was a three-way swipe right in favour of Andrew Donoghue and uh, he will be going through to take on Taylor James so Alex Griffin will not be a happy man the uh, computer says one thing of course but the judges, they got it right. Sadly, uh, whatever was programming through in the computer, we'll get that looked at. We've got a couple of technicians here on site. So uh, next battle, as I mentioned, Adam Whitehead and Atlan Norman. A31 Safiro going up against the Nissan S15. Well, let's see what Adam Whitehead in the Black Line Tires A31 Safiro can do as he leads out. Oh, he starts with a huge big wheel drop. Both cars winding on some nice angle as they come through hitting their clips. At the normal so they're closer to the clip than what Adam Whitehead was at the stage. And he slows up. Almost looks like we might have seen, dare I say it, a straight line. We certainly uh, see both of these cars power back out. At the Norman well and truly offline. Well, what started was a big mistake to Adam Whitehead. Might have actually played back into his favour. Come the second half. The winner was Andrew Donoghue. He is going through to face Taylor James. Let's go to the second half of this battle. And it will be Atlan Norman this time. Now he's got a lot of work to do from the front. Sets that car up nicely. A big wide chase. Well and truly off the... Uh, uh, and that will be enough. Sadly, coming straight off the track. Not sure if that maybe was an uh, issue for the car. Might have broken something which was prevalent in the second half of the first battle here between these two drivers. But there's going to be the black line. A31 Sephiro that is going to cross the line in first place. Of course, let's have a look at the live stream. How's it all going, guys? What have we got here? Who thinks what? I see a few people happy that uh, Taylor James, well, he's already going through. All right, let's have a look at the results. And one, two, three slides left. Dunker, Mackie and Paul Adam Whitehead confirmed to be going through. Go back to there. And it will be Jordan Joyce who qualified in fifth position going up against Eddie Heyman. Great to see Eddie back in the D1NZ. So it's a VIP car care S13. Beautifully prepared. Beautiful looking car that's going to drive himself out now. Big mistake for Heyman. Heyman has over rotated coming into the first turn. Judges will no doubt look at that to ensure that that wasn't encouraged or it didn't happen because of the uh, driver up in front, but Jordan Joyce this runs over the white line slightly. That may be a slight point seduction, but it's going to be nothing in comparison to the zero of Eddie. Hello, how are you? Fanga Ray, good to see some Fanga's people. Let's look at the second half of this battle. Eddie Heyman this time again, just like the first battle we saw today, a lot of work to do as he leads the way with the A31 Safira. Wide line to start, comes back in to try and grab that clip. VIP car keys machine. He knows that he really doesn't have a lot to do. You see the discoloration out there as Heyman's obviously put a wheel off. Does so again. Dirt turbo. And it comes through to finish as Jordan Joyce does tuck up underneath. Big grab of break for Heyman. And it looks like uh... Hello Tony Counter. Here we go. One, two, three. Swipes to the left. Jordan Joyce will go through. Time to move to the right hand side. Top 16, Sean Potros, of course, going to the pointy end of the field last round, but wanting, wanting to do the same. Matthew Brown. Now, Matthew Brown certainly struggled with that car this weekend, over -rotated, rotated numerous times, but of course, will be trying to do his best in this battle here. It's the At Pace Solutions 180 going up against the Choice Events S14. Potros, our round number two winner in Wellington, wanting to replicate that this weekend here at Hampton Downs. And he's himself created a great gap between himself and Matthew Brown. Only one car in the shot now. As Sean Potros will drive his way to a commanding lead in the first half wheel off and almost looks like a straight run. Really good surprise of Matthew Brown will lead. Out, round two winner, Sean Potros, in the choice of NCS14 at Pace Solutions, 180, let's see what he can do, it almost looked like he had run Sean Potros out there, he didn't quite have as much angle as he just would like to have seen, and I think uh, Sean Potros may have had to made a decisive uh, movement at that point to stop contact, as we see Matthew Brown finishing off this one. Certainly big issues which you need to rectify coming into the 
show. We'll see what the judges do say. Slide left for Sean Potros. Slide right for Matthew Brown. Zach Pohl says Potros. Dan Mackey, Brendan Dunker, three swipes left for the 719 Choice Events S14 pilot, Sean Potros. He'll be lined up on the right-hand side of the tree. Aaron Hyatt, because it's his car, of course took the win. And that means that we will miss that battle out. Michael Thorley, Thorley in the NZ C33 Laurel with the C33.4 R34 front of Laurel will go up against Adam Campbell. His first full season of D1NZ Pro Sport was Pro Sport brought to us by Turbo Smart. Into the second turn here, the big left hander comes up through the V Energy inside quick. Four wheels off for our chase car, and it will be Michael Thorley again. It's come down to mistakes here in the Turbo Smart Pro Sport Championship, dominating the Turbo Smart Pro Sport Championship. This season so far, it's the chase and it's the time for the other, for the other drivers to stand up, take notice and say, look, we're here to do it as well. So Sponto Automotive FC RX7 from Adam Kaplan. Again, another wheel off runs for the out, fully having to switch over and he'll come through hitting the, I think the judges will not be upset about that. This is a bit of grass on the track from the previous excursion from Adam Kaplan. Kaplan comes through. Untidy, but slightly better. All right, slide left, Michael Thorley. Slide right for Adam Camplin. One, two strikes, three strikes in the favour of Michael Thorley. Michael Thorley will go through. That might have been preempted earlier this morning with myself and Dan Mackey. All right, let's have a look at this battle here. It's Kurt Blackie sitting fourth in the championship, going up against Charlie Blond Walsh. So a big wide start for Blackie as he comes through diamonds off the turn, misses his clip. Charlie Bond Walsh. Well, it's going to be an interesting one for the judges to call first up. Potential wheel off as well for Kurt Blackie half point. And we'll come through. So nice speed from the um, Avians and Kurt Tires making the out to Skyline. And the choice of events machine coming through to finish. It's not just entertain, say stupid things, but if I can sway the judges' opinion in my favour, I'll always do that. And they've said just get them away from us. So I'm sitting uh, in a very nice area. Let's go back to the second half of this battle. Charlie Bond Walsh. Kurt Blackie. It's a great angle to start. Washes up to see if he does the same. Kurt Blackie has come straight up underneath. One's hook and O's in turn one. And Blackie, that'll be enough. Doesn't actually need to finish off the lap because the driver in front has created a mistake. But Blackie, he might as well use up those tyres. Thanks to Cooper Tyres, Matt Manui. He knows he's done it. Cooper Tyres, Matt Manui on the side of his car. Cooper Tyres, Cooper Cowie doing the job here. I've been told to stop steering. Here we go. Left for Blackie, right for Bond Walsh, and one, two, three strikes in favour of Kurt Blackie. Kurt Blackie goes through and will take on Michael Thorley on the right hand side. Yeah, yeah, we like we went through 16 yesterday. Um, we'd easily go through that again today. Um, we had to get a few more tyres in. We brought down some different, a uh, couple of different types, and yeah, so. Well, let's go straight into this first battle of the top eight. And it is Taylor James that drives through, sets himself up, of course. He was a top qualifier yesterday. Let's see what Andy Donahue can do as he comes through this first section. They're both on their clip. Slightly different run than what we've probably seen, Darren, in the uh, the Pro Championship. What are we looking for as you come through this V-Energy inside clip? Uh, yeah, so you can see that Taylor went nice and deep into the first entry, gave him a nice line through. Um, he was a little bit off that inside clip. Um, and then he got a little bit of a slingshot advantage through that midsection. However... Um, it was still a perfect lead run, nice chase, and um, yeah, I was able to close the proximity. So TTI replay, we see exactly what Darren's talking about. So both of these cars, they set itself up nicely. You can see one slightly shallower, trying to get that proximity back, but then of course you scrub off and you lose a lot of that speed if you're doing that. Yeah, so basically if you come in too early on that corner, then you're gonna ha you're gonna have to sacrifice the exit corner speed. So by coming in deeper to start with, you're gonna get a faster exit, and if you sacrifice that, you're really going to have to push the car and try to make up through that, that midsection to try to close that gap. Well, you're not a judge because people actually like you, but tell me, who would you choose in uh, taking advantage? I'm thinking Taylor James, would you be on the same? Uh... Uh, yeah, I think it would be scored yeah, pretty close on that. Um, Taylor might have a slight advantage. Um, the, uh, Andrew managed to close the proximity, so yeah, it's probably been pretty close. At well, let's see what they can do in the second half of this battle with the HK Apostle C33 Laurel with Andrew Dunn, who leading out Taylor James in the Central Drift team, or uh, the Sylvia here. So James, he's managed to, uh, sorry, there's a slight gap being formed between them, but here comes James, he's going to try and pull it back as they come through in the second half of this battle. 
Yeah, so the uh, so Andrew's car seems to have a bit of pace, and Taylor's trying to trying to obviously maintain that proximity and catch back out. So, um, yeah, big risk definitely. is certainly the one. Yeah. Wow, Brendan Duncan says one more time. Dan Mackey and Zach Pohl choose Taylor James. We'll go through. So two strikes left in the form of Taylor James. What's your take on one more time battles? Do you like them? Uh, yeah, sometimes it's it's definitely warranted. <laughs> um, sometimes you watch a battle and you just cannot pick a, a winner. There's there's two things in drifting that I absolutely love: RB engines and one more time battles. <laughs> All right, well we've got Adam Whitehead. He uh, qualified in fourth position. He's going up against Jordan Joyce. Jordan Joyce has had a great start to his uh, D1NZ campaign since he's joined this season. First time out there, but looks like a seasoned veteran out on track. The black line ties A31 Safiro driving away. Slightly longer wheelbase car. What's the difference between that and a shorter S13? Uh, well, yeah, you obviously like it in a longer wheelbase car. It's not actually as much as you might think. Uh, it's not, it's, if you look at them and visually, they might look a lot different in size. However, the wheelbase is... Uh, and it plays such a big part of the score. It's going to be Jordan Joyce this time who's going to lead out Adam Whitehead in the black line A31 Safiro. VIP car care up against black line. So we can see a slightly different transition from the from the chase car as he comes through the first turn here at Hampton Bounds. Yes, it has a real good, really good entry by Jordan. He came out nice and wide, got that outside zone, came right back in and got that inside clip. So it's a really good line. And those are the sorts of things that you've really got to watch for with a lead car. You can see really shallow for the A31 Safiro to come through. That's obviously trying to get back on proximity, but well and truly offline. Yeah, so Jordan obviously had an awesome line which allowed him to maintain a lot of speed and he was able to, you can see here he came in nice and wide, out, got that outside zone and came right in and got this inside clip perfect. Well, that's, that is perfect, that's a perfect clip. Yeah, so, so that gave him that acceleration right there, he carried that corner speed and got good exit speed which managed to pull a gap on. So Pro and, Championship mate, coming up this, uh, who have you got first up today? Uh, yeah, so we've uh, got a buy into top 16. Oh nice. So. so um, yeah, so that's always a good way to start. So you've got to play the wait and see? Yep, uh, so that's either going to be between Troy Jenkins or Carl Thompson. So uh, we'll see either one's. Uh, I've had some runs out here this weekend with them. Let's and, have a... Uh, well, there we go. Jordan Joyce, one strike right, two strike right. Zach Pohl says the same. Jordan Joyce is going to go through into the top four. So yeah. your wife, she actually uh, turned 21 yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> 21 again, I think. Yeah. 21 again. So we, all right, so Aaron Hyatt going up against Sean Potros. Aaron Hyatt actually was go, supposed to go up against Russell Veer, but oh, look how wide he's gone. Potentially too wide is Sean Potros. He was our round two winner at Max Motors Family Speedway in Wellington, and he's created quite a gap between himself and, of course, Hyatt in the Cactus uh, Vape S14. Just love watching the rubber just peeling off these tyres. You see them spit it out right at this point here. They go wide, you can actually see all the marbles getting picked up and thrown outside of the track. So there's a there's a line of the, of the track that is obviously reasonably clean and has a lot of rubber laid down. That's the line you've really got to try to stay on. Well, let's have a look at the second half of this barrel. Aaron Hyatt will lead out Sean Potros in the choice of NCS14. It's Cactus Vape. This car was uh, beaten up by many a driver last uh, yesterday. So it's of course owned by Chad McKenzie, but campaigned by Aaron Hyatt this season. It was also run by Russell Veer and Jared Olive Crone will be driving it later on this afternoon in the Pro Championship. Slightly off that V Energy inside clip as he sets himself up for the big right hand sweeper here at Hampton Downs. Looked like he grabbed a bit of handbrake as well coming through. Oh, there's a big mistake. Yeah, so potentially, depending on how the first one was scored, um, I'm not sure if it was quite a zero deduction on the for the chase car initially on the first pass, as there was sort of a shallow of angle. It might not have been a straight line. So, it'll be interesting to see uh, how the judges score it. Well, let's see what went wrong for Sean Potros as he comes out of the second turn. Shallow line is possibly what did it. So he was, didn't come out and push out as far as he did. Maybe got lost in the smoke. And at this point here, we went one, maybe two wheels off. But it's all about, did he go one, did he go two? Okay. So slide right for Potros, slide left for, sorry, right for Hyatt, left for Potros. And it will be three strikes right. Aaron Hyatt will go through. Must have been a zero point score going through. And talking about our next driver, we'll have a chat. We'll introduce him after this battle here, which is, of course, the NZ. R34 fronted C33 Laurel of Michael Thorley, our championship leader, going up against the man sitting fourth. And this is why it is the chase. Kurt Blackie in the KDNZ. Cooper tires, Mount Monger, Nui R32 Skyline gets it wrong. 
Adam Davies, you're from Tauranga, so is this boy here. Not a great start for his first battle of the day. No, unfortunately, a bit, a bit of a mistake there from Kurt Blackie. Uh, this is a sort of track, I suppose, where it's made of, you make it or break it at the start of the track, so you just obviously got a bit close to Michael Thorley there and, and had to make a correction and yeah, cause him to straight line, straighten up. So, so we've, we've got both of these cars coming through, and this is, I think, that's possibly the point that it went wrong for Kurt. He dived in and tried to dive sort of diamond off the turn as such, and um, obviously had to get on the brakes maybe to stop himself from making contact with the driver in front. Yeah, yeah, that's, like I say, it's, that's the point where it's very crucial to get it right, and he just a bit of a dive there, and it caused him to to uh, shell off a bit and gain a bit too much proximity, and sort of caught him out of it. All right, so let's have a, have a chat to you and talk about how you went yesterday, third qualifier. Yeah, I was, had a had a pretty good day yesterday. I was sitting in P1 for for most of it until Fanger came along and put me. So yeah, you were um, there. I mean, I think you're on 79 points. A whole gaggle of cars at 78.5. Look at the second half of this battle between Kurt Blackie and Michael Thorley. So the KVNZ machine uh, out of Tauranga. Nice angle. He really needs a mistake from the driver in second place. But Thorley at this stage doesn't look like he's going to give him any form of mistake. No, nice Kurt's, on a, Kurt's on a nice, nice lead run. A few, mis few um, corrections in the front wheels, but all in all, it's a, it's a pretty good lead run. And thought he's doing well just to stay with him. You know, he's got got a pretty easy run into the. Um, just, uh, chase Have a look at the judges. Michael Thorley, check one, check two, check three. Michael Thorley will go through. Kurt Blackie, he was sitting fourth in the chase. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Rick practice. That's all right. I mean, there's only, there's only the pro field that don't like you right now. Look, we've got Taylor James going up against Jordan Joyce. It's Taylor James. He's uh, sitting at the pointy end of the field going up against Jordan Joyce, a man who's just fresh to D1NZ Pro Sport category in the VIP Kharkis S13. So a wide run to start, comes through and tries to hit that clip. Jordan Joyce doing a great job in the chase position as he sets himself through to go into the second turn through the, the energy inside clip cop. Yeah, Taylor's driving really well. He was, uh, he's had a very hard week ahead uh, of himself to putting a whole new motor in after he blew that. Round, but sport such as this, a lot of it does come down to interpretation of what the judges want. And when we talk about line, style, angle, let's talk about line at this stage here. So uh, Taylor James, he was uh, he qualified, I think, it was first. Yeah, first position. So the biggest thing they're doing here in battles is see how you just seen Taylor um, not actually enter to the right hand side of the and the judges see because it's very unpredictable with these lead cars. If you can't dive to the right and then back to the left, you end up getting left behind. And Taylor did it quite well there where he's able to sit uh, back a little bit, sit back on Jordan and then dive in into that first sweeper. And uh, Jordan just doing a really nice clean run and now uh, look at yeah, that. Yeah, there we go. That can happen. Taylor was so quiet, I couldn't hear it was, <laughs> so you know, you, you just got to go on feel. And well here we go, slight, slight right for Jordan Joyce, left for Taylor James, three yeah. strikes right, Jordan Joyce will go through, so Tay James, this is called the chase for a reason, and it's starting to affect some of the positions. Jordan Joyce, yeah. he's, what do you think of the fact that Cole's finally got lights on his car? I mean, they're stick on, but they're still lights. It's been a long time coming, to be honest, and uh, finally he's manned up about it. What was that? First time since Time Attack in about 2011 <laughs> that he's had lights. Well, let's have a look at this battle here between Michael Thorley and Aaron Hyatt. Thorley running the... Well, how high can you get Aaron Hyatt? Well and truly offline, Thorley can't make a mistake now. Of course, it's a... Yeah, Thorley also went a bit deep into that, into that corner, whether he washed out a bit. And yeah, so same yeah. again in the, in the second inside. He completely missed it. So a few big mistakes here from Thorley, which doesn't help um, Aaron Hyatt behind him. Oh, to be a judge. That's one of the things, if a car goes off to you guys, give me a heart if you love that idea. Give me an angry face if you want Brendan White. And there'll be no angry faces on the live stream today. Second half of the battle between Aaron Hyatt and Michael Thorley. It's the, uh, so that's the Chad McKenzie 2JZ powered machine. Of course, the Cactus Vape car of Hyatt leading out their current series leader as we move into the chase here round three of the D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Hampton Downs, nice to be back at a nice flowing circuit following off the uh, couple of concrete jungle rounds that we've had in rounds one or two. I think this is quite a clean run. What do you guys take of that one there? Jump in that, you know, cut in the corner. So. All right, oh, here we go. Ooh. Slide left, Michael Thorley, slide right for Aaron Hyatt. Zach Pohl says Thorley, uh, um, Mackey says Hyatt, and Brendan Dunker. Wow. Moves in the right hand side so in the fourth battle between, of course, Taylor James and Michael Thorley. 
Yes, yeah, so Michael Thorley, you've been giving him a bit of insight, eh, Darren, over the years of different techniques and whatnot, and same with myself and Taylor. As you can see, he should just do a nice, clean lead run. Michael's actually going for the flick entry as well. Yeah, so you can see he's trying to maintain that proximity by not initiating so much to the left and diving in on the, as he slips back to the right. Now, he's huge. A little bit here. This has got huge championship uh, potential on this one here because these guys are both battling it out for first, the first, second, third place. Yeah, and you can see that they've driven a lot together um, so far. They've both been on a pretty good run here. Um, Paul has obviously had to sacrifice certain areas to maintain proximity. Taylor's car looks pretty dialed with that new RB30. And, um, but yeah, all around that was a pretty good run from both drivers. All right, let's talk it through the TTI replay, guys. What do you guys think? So there's Taylor diving, grabbing the hammer and a touch, just trying to suck the car back in. See, he missed that inner clip just again. Uh, which is definitely going to hurt him a little bit and Thorley was up on it. You can always get caught out there. Thorley dived in again but as we were talking about, see Taylor just wanted to get a little bit wider on that, that inner clip there and once again missed that slight outer clip but because he was shallower coming into that second inner clip that hindered Michael coming in which then he lost a lot of drive coming out where he didn't then get deep to that third yeah, outer zone. outside zone which then affected him his proximity. Taylor got the slingshot he sort of had to cut to the inside of the track and lose a lot of speed to get around the corner. So you'll watch on this one, Taylor won't initiate realistically behind Michael. See how he just done a little bit of a power run and Michael has gone really deep in there. He's definitely going to miss that in the clip massively, which Taylor will get a big advantage. You can see there how Thorley carried a lot of corner exit speed, which was a result of having a deeper corner, which was actually will probably work against him considering it was way too far offline. Uh, towards the outside of the track, so the judges will probably rule the proximity as not so much of a factor in this run and go off primarily the line. So straight into the TTI replay, we uh, watched both of these drivers re uh, sorry, initiate into this first turn, and that's what you're talking about, that big push out wide, missing so the clip. see how he's going to get a lot of drive out of this corner, see how they were together, and then all of a sudden there's three, four car lengths that pulled away. So uh, for, for Thorley, he definitely gave himself an advantage, but that's not what the judges are asking us to do. And as you can see, look at the car lengths he's pulled on it, which I think Taylor has probably done something smart and just stuck to that line. Resort back to qualifying line. If you can't chase the lead car, then resort back to your qualifying line and just try to put on a nice clean run. Don't drop any wheels or make any big corrections. Um, yeah, obviously that proximity was a result of Thorley going offline. This line. is the wrong replay, but anyway. <laughs> but as you can see here again, so Taylor's gone very deep here, but missed that inner clip. And as here, see he hasn't gone very wide, <laughs> even though this isn't the right replay. <laughs> But let's have a look at this one here. Michael Thorley slide right. Taylor James slide left. One, two, three swipes left. And that's definitely showing an example of what we were talking about where Taylor was smart. He didn't try to cut the corner. He didn't try to shallow it up to try and gain the proximity. The judges are really trying to make us stick to that line. Yeah. And Do I think obviously that, that result was due to a lot of the fact is the proximity wasn't a judged factor at that point because the proximity that he had gained was a result of him making a mistake. So yeah. they would have basically ruled that out and gone off of the line and then made a decision on who done the better lead, provided the better chase run, and then scored it from there. Because obviously a lot of us do think, you know, like, oh, what? how did that happen? Thorley pulled a huge gap on it. But it all came down to that first part of and the track. lead versus lead. So yeah, lead versus lead. So you've got to go back to when Taylor led. He did a very clean run. He did what the judges were asking. He might have been off a little bit on clip one, but then came back from there. So Thorley, obviously with his lead run, just went too deep, yep. washed him out, but then gave him the huge drive to the second clip, which it's then... Corner exit speed and you know, created that proximity. So, yeah, it comes down to lead versus lead. Well, let's have a look at this next battle. It will be Jordan Joyce. He's wanting to probably grab his first podium of his 2019 season. A wide line to start. We'll try and diamond off and grab that inside clip coming through. Real good line from Jordan Joyce coming through there. Got that real good inner clip. And actually, see, up, sitting up high too for that inner clip, which gives Aaron a little bit of room to suck back in. And right here he's gone nice and wide to that outer zone, exactly right what and see track. Aaron just went a slight bit wide there again, dropping a little wheel and having a little bobble there, but Jordan Joyce have to take hats off, that was a real clean, nice lead run. So as we have a look at the TTI replay, when you're in the chase position Darren, what are you thinking at this point here? Um, basically you're trying to maintain as much proximity on that entry point, as soon as that car gets away from you, you're at a disadvantage and you're trying to make 
you're trying to catch up that proximity and that's where you make mistakes you're obviously pushing harder trying to carry more speed into the turn and that's when you're going to blow out the exit of the corner make mistakes. and make, make mistakes, mistakes and fall behind more hey this is of course huge for both of these drivers they're both rookies to the 2019 season and uh, both wanting to grab a, a spot on the podium nice clean lead run that's what he yeah. really needs to focus on because i'd say he's at a disadvantage what he's going to have to do is make sure he gets that entry perfect comes into in that first inside clipping point and puts on a really nice run jordan put on a really good lead run to start with which allows you to give a good chase run so, yeah, he's really going to have to try to match that or better it. And because possibly Jordan's got a slight advantage for the lead, realistically all he needs to do is sit with that lead car or go back to his qualifying line and just run it from there. All right, so, of course, this is the final, the final uh, of pro sport. <laughs> what are you guys taking over the show? These people have said, hey, look, these guys are taking over the show. I mean, one person said that you are both better commentators than you are drivers. You know who that one person was? Me. Leanne? <laughs> Leanne. Oh, there's no way that Leanne would uh, ever say anything but a swear word when supporting her boy. <laughs> Did that a couple of years ago. Puka Kaui. The pressure was the, on. The pressure was on. I liked when, uh, I think it was old Wazza, Warren Sear, said, we're not going to make any commentary at all because we don't want to um, jinx anyone. Cole's mum says, no, Steve can. He would never jinx my boy. I think you went on to win the championship that year. All right, so Jordan Joyce, his very first time uh, on a podium, the same with Aaron Hyatt, but who will be at the top step? Of course, we're going to bring all four of these cars out to do victory skids. We're going to call them on the track, and uh, check and flag in hand, we will go up and light this place up before we bring out the Pro Championship. That's you two. Yeah, mate, obviously, uh, now the boys have fixed our cars up, which is awesome. Um, yeah, somebody I ran out of talent in practice <laughs> and uh, spun in front of me. Yeah, so I had a brand new looking car, you know, the new 250 GT The Energy Skyline. There you go, Darren, grab one yeah, of them, mate. Nice. And, um, you know, it was looking pristine. The boys, as I say, have done a magical job. And what do you know? You smacked my rear <laughs> bumper off. But I did run out of talent, I have to say. I've run right right now to tell him. Yeah. But here Thanks. we go, back to the battle anyway. Well, it is final time for the Pro Sport Championship round number three, the Chase Hampton Downs, and it will be the Cactus Vape S14 that leads the way. He's got Jordan Joyce shallowing up to try and grab that proximity. Grabs the clip, though, as they come through into the second part of this track, second turn. Yeah, for sure. Jordan's doing as what he needs to, I guess. He's had a bit of an advantage, so he doesn't need to push heavily. You know, it's one of those things you can push too much and really let it go so Jordan's done very well Aaron's obviously done a good lead run for him definitely had a good line eh, in there yeah, that entry obviously came in I thought he was actually going to go too deep there but he's come in nice and wide got out to that outside zone got all the way back into that inside clip so that was actually a really good part of the first turn first sector and then he's managed to maintain a nice smooth line and, and finish the run so obviously gave Jordan a really good lead run to chase made a slight correction there but uh, the rest of it looks pretty good so it would definitely be down to the pressure of the judges. All right, so uh, we will certainly find out if they've got... <coughs> oh, it's for me. Oh, it's my, I've got an ice cream. Hang on. All right, so Steve's got to have a break. He's got one of those lovely little ice creams. But here we go. We've got the replay of Jordan uh, leading out. As you can see, he's done a good, nice, deep entry there. Aaron probably lost a bit of proximity there as he transitions to the left instead of the right. Jordan gets some good drive out of here. Aaron's still with him as well, doing a pretty good chase run through here. Both pretty tidy, very similar leads. Jordan obviously Jordan getting out wide. On the edge of the track. That was the only little thing that happened there for Aaron as he dropped the wheel Slide on that wobble. Yeah, outside yeah. clip and a bit of a wobble on the exit there. So, you know, it was already a very tight, close um, battle for the two boys. And then if they show the replay of the other one. Can you just mention um, Pack and Save? I got Scott giving an ice cream from uh, Benji Wilkerson. Yeah. Benji Wilkerson, Pack and Save. Uh, you can go to Pack and Save Botany Down. They uh, give you ice creams whenever. <laughs> oh, look. Wilkin Wilkinson Motorsport Pit. So this is Aaron's lead run. He did an awesome first entry there. Jordan got a bit of a gap pulled on him because he had a really clean run. He dripped in there on the second clip there, but he was a little bit late on that. Um, Clip. He started to pull up off the corner, and that's because he didn't really get as high as what the judges had been asking. So this is a very tight final run for the boys. All right, well, it is time now to find out who the winner is 
of the Turbo Smart Pro Sport Championship. Slide left for Jordan Joyce, slide right for Aaron Hyatt. Who will take their first win? One strike left, Jordan Joyce, two strikes left, and the winner of round three of the D1NZ Pro Sport Championship, round three, Jordan Joyce. What a win for Jordan Joyce and the team. Those guys will be absolutely ecstatic down the end there. You can see him pumping the crowd. It is time for victory skids. If you're here at the track, bring it on. Let's hear some noise if you're here at home. I want to see the love hearts. I want to see the likes. What a great championship. Uh, what a great thing to do. It's the second person that we've seen have their very first win this season in pro sport. Yeah, definitely, mate. It's real awesome to see these boys. I know they've been working hard. They've been trying to figure out you know what to do with the car to get it to grip up and uh you're going to watch this he's going to get a little bit crazy out there he's got a lot of his boys here a lot of support and uh yeah pretty cool to see you know a, a new newcomer come up you know look at that he's got the hands out he better be clicking top gear or that's not cool at all <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah the boys jordan joyce winner of round number three of the d1nz brought to us the pro sport championship brought to us by turbo smart Man, this is cool. Look at them. Now that's getting down his end of the pits. He knows that. Yeah, where's my boys? There they're at. Yeah, for sure, man. He'll be over the moon. Eh? This is the best part of the, you know, the best part of it when you, you know, get that victory and really get to just give your car a little bit of hoo-ha. Um, you know, VIP car cares for him. He's got a good set of sponsors on board, which has given him the support to be able to come out here. Same with Aaron. And that's Chad's car, eh? That's the Chad's 14.5, of course, and a great victory. So great um, podium anyway for him in his very first time up on the uh, up on the rostrum this weekend. Yeah, for sure, man. And obviously Chad will be over the moon. You know, Chad was a uh, pro sport champion himself, so it'll be pretty cool for him to see that his car's got up onto the podium, you know, with Jordan out there. It's, it's real cool to see that there's still newcomers coming in and they've got some serious talent. You know, same with Taylor, he'll be a little bit gutted in himself that uh, he got clipped a bit, but hey, hats off to these young fellas, they're driving real well, but um, hey, we better go get ready, mate, we're going to go, uh, hopefully, get up there where these guys are too and have a bit of fun. Alright, well, thank you very much to Cole Armstrong, thank you for, oh yeah, thank you, there we go, thanks to Darren Kelly, of course, uh, we will get, uh, we'll see if we can get a, a word with, uh, we'll, we'll bring Jordan Joyce down, but uh, no, it's a great stuff. Victory skids for round number three of the D1NZ. So what do we got? So look, Ben Wilkinson, here you are. Thank you very much for the ice cream, mate. Come and sit down yeah, over here in the... Uh, welcome to commentary for D1NZ, mate. Nice to see you here, buddy. You, thank you for the ice cream. Oh, you know, uh, we've got a real fruit ice cream truck just parked outside of our pits, so... Um, well, you bought your own one. one. Yeah, we've got our own one there, uh, you know. Custom uh, Wilkinson Motorsports spec. That's what I'm talking about. So uh, we can see the drone flying over the top of uh, Tay J as he drops the rear bumper. You've uh, you've done pro sport oh. before, haven't you? I have, I have. And I never got to do that though. I didn't get to the podium in pro sport or, or get to the burnouts, but it was definitely a good learning curve. Well, we've got to do track sweeping. So you've got, of course, we're coming into pro after this one here. I think we're going to drop the live stream and we'll come back on. Um, tell me, who you got first up? Uh, first up against Maddie Hill. Uh, so same as what two years ago, I think we were here last. We yeah had our first run against Matty Hill on this track, and now same again. Hey, the car's looking great. I like the add of the addition of a little bit of red on the car. I think it sort of really breaks up that yellow and black. And yeah, that's it. It, uh, it worked well, and obviously with Penrite on board now, um, you know, supplying us all their oils, um, it kind of worked and flowed nicely. So we uh, yeah went with it. All right, well, it's, uh, it's it's great. You've got a big... So here we go, of course, Ben Wilkinson. Um, where do we follow you? You're at Wilkinson... Uh, yeah, Wilkinson Motorsport, Motorsport on Instagram, uh, Wilkinson Motorsport on Facebook, and I think uh, Wilkinson Motorsport on YouTube too. Yeah, you, you're on YouTube as well. We are, we're trying it out. And, okay, so yeah, in YouTube. So look, one of the things that uh, we always see around is a lot of people having cameramen, videographers and stuff. Have we got somebody following you this weekend? Yeah, we do indeed. So we've got um, Scott Olds who's coming around and doing a lot of our videography and um, some photography and also got our James Denley so JD photography. How do you enjoy the uh, Pro Championship? It's been good yeah a lot of learning um, obviously a big step up and a big change to the, the I guess the aggression of the driving um, but no it's been good so far and we're, we're loving it. And uh, you've gone from what was it S14 to start to 15? 13. 13 yeah, to 15? S13 to 15 so it's um, been a good upgrade a bit of a you know, I guess a tighter stronger chassis a bit more nimble um, and a bit more easier to move around and get into those tight gaps. 
All yeah. right. Hey, well, look, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to switch to some, uh, sw switch to some ads, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. Your wear hat is always smooth.